this is Kelly. She is a Eastern Freetail, so she's an adult one, whereas the ones we had before were the baby ones, so they are roughly about the same size. And she came in through Cat Attack. So uh, we're just waiting on Flight Avery for her to go and strengthen her wings and be able to fly. So what are we looking at here, Matt? So this is a little broad-nosed bat, and he came in with Cat Attack and uh, Misadventure. So he got a bit lost from the roost. And he's eating? A millworm. And he'd be how long? How old? How long? How big? Um... There's a not lot to a microbat, is there? <laughs> Considering this is an adult. Watch is a northern free tail. Um, and she came in, we had, I think she may have been a cat attack. I'm not, I can't remember. We get, we tend to get a few of them with cat attacks that come in. Um, and she's been on, she's, we've had her since, uh, I think we've had her for about three months, maybe six months now. So we've had her for quite a while. Um, and we're just waiting for the flight Avery for her to strengthen her wings so she can be released. Okay, so this is Gidget and Wayne. These are eastern freetail bats. So as you can see, a lot smaller than the, uh, the, the northern freetail we had before. And um, so these ones are all, uh, a um, misadventure. So they've actually fallen out of the roost, too young to fly. Um, so they're actually still on um, what we call a slurry meal. So not quite ready for mealworms just yet. Their teeth aren't quite developed enough. Uh, they will get a little bit bigger than this but not too much more, so. And a real little handfuls, these two, boy and a girl. So Matt and Nikki, and they are the only two people on the Sunshine Coast who look after the really tiny baby microbats. And we are just in possession of a Gould's long-eared bat, and we're just going to do a standard inspection straight after we have removed it from its carry case, having taken it from the Chancellor uh, State College. So it's over to you, Matt and Nikki. Yeah. Uh, so what we're doing now is an initial uh, examination. So first thing we do is to check to see if there's any wing damage and to see how old the bat is as well. So we tell them how old the bat is by the joints in their fingers and this one if you could face it towards me. This one is a sub, uh, sub adult its joints are starting to just starting to fuse so it would have been a first flight kind of situation when when they found found the bat the mm -hmm. next thing we do is to check for any body damage which seem oop, don't you dare start flying on me so there's no it doesn't seem to be any puncture wounds on the back and then we have to try the front, which is a little bit more difficult. This way we can see what uh, what gender it is as well. Yes, so we have a little girl at the moment and there doesn't seem to be any wounds on her stomach either. And she's very feisty, which is a good sign. These are our cranky, cranky creatures. And as you can see, the long eared's uh, they've got big curly long ears. There's no damage to her ears either. There doesn't seem to be any facial damage. Um, but we will keep, we'll still have to keep her in for two days to, in case any bruising shows up or any signs of concussion start to appear. 
but uh, uh, Billy the Gould's long-eared bat. Uh, he's been with us for about a month now. He's had concussion and brain damage. He's doing really, really well. Uh, these big ears help him to locate insects in the wild. But he's, And his friend is flying around the house at the moment. Um, as you can see, they're nice and fluffy as well. But these guys are forest bats, so they dodge trees really, really well. And they're really good at flying in small spaces. Most of these guys are found inside people's houses, and that's where we get the rescue. And what we got here... So this is a eastern long-eared bat and um, she came into care because she had uh, brain damage and concussion um, and now she's actually eating really really well, flying incredibly well so she'll be ready to go to the flight relief cage within the next week. The video is having a great deal of trouble maintaining focus but I think we've all had a pretty good look. And Matt, what are we looking at here on the smoke alarm? <laughs> uh, so that's an eastern long-eared. And that's a naughty girl, I understand. Yes. <laughs> Her name is... Um... Sorry. Her name's Cassie. Now she's, she's a little bit busy, so Eastern... This one was Cassie. I remember Cassie flying all around your living room the other day. That's how we knew she was ready to go. Now this is what they should be acting like when you handle them. Big grins doing the rah, I'm scary. Oh shush. Look at those teeth. Yeah, let's have a look at those teeth. Look at those teeth. They're like hundreds of little needles. Oh, they're quite easy to see in this light. Yeah. And she's going to have something to eat. Yes. What she's eating now is a mealworm. We give, we normally give our bats a feed just before we release them so that they don't really have to go hunting that night. Um, but then they'll have to feed themselves afterwards, obviously. What sort of percentage of body weight would these things get in a, an evening of foraging? Uh, they can eat their entire body weight in one night. In one night. And so that would that... be, as I understand, um, ground-dwelling insects that they catch as they leave the ground as well as um, as, as flying well as flying insects. Insects. Yeah. Yes, so they use their tail as like a sort of scoop when they catch insects. And the attraction in this location is that the uh, roller door was up at the RGA and there were lights on after 9 o'clock at night and lots and lots of moths. Yes. So I dare say that was just an invitation to go... To go inside, yeah. ...inside. And once she was in, the roller door came down and then she was trapped for a week. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, so their roosts are normally in hollows of trees uh, so she, and within about 10 metres off the ground. These guys are low flyers. Indigo. She's and just had a bit of a feed um, of uh, about seven or eight mealworms. So she'll have a nice nice belly um, so she doesn't have to look for food tonight. And she's pretty keen to go, so I reckon we um, I reckon I reckon we release her. And there's no second take on this, so let's do it. Alright. Ready Nick? Yeah. Ready to go? Hang on. She's not. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you press record? It is recording. All right, she's going to go. And of course, the butcher bird's going to try and chase her. Great. She's gone. Good job.
Um, Thanks, guys. One of the problems of looking up. <laughs> I've just been blessed. Space blessed. <laughs> yeah, probably not standing in a good spot. <laughs> but this is amazing. 6.35, sunset, and we're off.
zombie mama, <laughs> not getting much sleep, and a newbie, a Christmas baby. Christmas Day baby, and he's called Nicholas. Yes, of course. Saint Nicholas. I mean, what else would we call this little babe? Mm -hmm. Found on the ground, another one in Malulaba. Mm -hmm. And look at that, he's motion on that. Yes, what a great Christmas present. Oh, what, what? The belief. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> for you, yeah. Yeah, what is it? Four hourly feeds? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> four hourly yes. feeds and a lot of uh, subcut fluids. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, he's doing really brilliant. Well. Look at he's like a he's little going. baby gremlin. He is still not up. Has he got oh, his eyes closed at the moment. Oh my god, he's really, he's really going, going for it. Oh, baby. Mm. Little Bobski is very good. Mm. Go for it. But that's what, 24 hours mm. you've had him just. Yeah, you're playing this afternoon. Yes, yeah. afternoon. So he's just on 24 hours. Mm. And look at it. Check, check out the foot, holding his bottle, yes, as if not it's letting like that natural. Go. Yeah, yeah, I know what this is all about. Mm. It might not be a mama teat, but it'll do. Mm. That's so cute. <laughs> I love that, that mm. little thumb. Yeah, that is, yeah, being raised in the suburbs. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to grab onto my bottle and I'm not letting go of this mm. teat. I can't believe oh, it, this mm. Look at that little... Good heavens. Well, baby Nicholas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bless you for Christmas. And we are about six days, you said, I think. Uh, he's uh, nine days old. Nine days. Nine days old. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like you to meet little Lily. Lily is an orphan black flying fox. And this little girl is found on the ground. Obviously, her mum has dropped her. Um, she managed to crawl along the ground and get to the bottom of a pandanus tree. Um, and some lovely member of the public called it in before the birds could attack her. Um, but she's in very good condition. She's about two weeks old and um, weighing 86 grams and loving her milk. She's taken to the biolac very, very well. Uh, so right now she thinks she's clinging onto mum, uh, on mum's nipple. And mum has the wing over her. So she's just had a feed and she's quite happy. Bees, look at this. A little flea that's just a little bit hungry. Mm -hmm. Oh, look okay. at that gorgeous foot. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, get the foot on the boob. Look at that. This is bat baby heaven. And the feed is what? What's the, what's it's the a formula step? that I, I'm using Biolac. There's two oh. companies that make formula for wildlife um, groups. Mm. For, um, and there's mm. incredibly specialised formulas for... Because the macropods have got different formula for yeah, the different yeah. ages, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, possum's got oh, a different yeah. one. He's sucking on that uh, one. Uh, and the flying milk. foxes have got a highly specialised... Mm. Uh, mm. So mm. that... Excuse me, am I that and one of the main differences, because it's all based on milk powder and it's probably cow's milk to start with, but what it, what they do is they treat it in such a way because the fat molecule in cow's milk is enormous. You know, mm. cow's milk was designed to make a calf, you know, yeah. go from zero to no, your half that. a ton in X amount yeah. of, you know. So the fat molecule is enormous. Mm. So to make the, wild, the milk for the wildlife, mm. they split mm -hmm. the fat molecule. Make it smaller. So make it smaller, so it's easier to digest mm -hmm. um, and and it. more usable mm -hmm. for um, bone and nice muscle and bloody bloody blah. This this little girl is still in the humidity crib, the little poppet. She's only about uh, thirteen days old at the moment. Uh, oh, wow. She was found lying on the ground down near the yacht car by Gimpy Terrace down in Tawanton. So that happens often. Hungry mum means a hungry bub. And, and it just loses its grip when mum's flying. So you see the little tummy, the little... Hi, oh, sweetheart, my lovely, precious one. See the little tummy? It's just starting to fur up, just a tiny little bit. But that's pressed up against mum. Um, that's how they thermoregulate. And until they're fully furred, mum carries them around with her. So it's about four weeks. She carries them until they fur up the little poppet. 
So she was cold, cold, cold and on the ground. Okay, this is little this is little Tiwa going on eight and a half weeks old, found on the ground by himself when he was only twenty-four days old. Um, so he was a very late baby, but we've had quite a few late babies this season. Yeah, goodness uh, gracious. Uh, yes, as you know from your yeah. sessions with Jeannie, who's got some <laughs> much younger ones. Yeah. But this this oh, little boy, I like that. Yeah, he'd, <laughs> he'd been on the ground for a while because he had a lot of ant bites all over him, the poor oh. little fella. He was just covered with ant bites. So, um, oh, dear me. Yeah, he, uh, he was very uncomfortable for a few days. And He's some, certainly liking that. He looks like a cat. He's about to start purring. Oh, they look at that. They do. Oh. They do. They love, they love the cuddles. Love it. <laughs> Definitely. I think I can hear him purring. <laughs> there you go, Snookers. Oh, my goodness. There you go. He's now behaving. This is little Jeremiah. Yes. Little grey boy who is 32 days, I think, he said. Oh, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, clinging to mama. Human mama. Very cute. Absolutely cute. There you go. They've got a beautiful colour around the neck. The greys. Oh, very, very cute. You're gorgeous. But you know it, don't you? You're going to be in Hollywood one day. <laughs> you will. In a bat-friendly movie. None of this Hammer House of Horrors rubbish. Because you're too nice. <laughs> yeah. A beautiful wing. Oh, I'm hanging. I won't say what you're hanging off. <laughs> <laughs> My but he's shirt. a boy. Classic. My shirt. <laughs> hanging on Mama's it. shirt. Oh, yes. Mama's shirt. <laughs> Two little babies, both adorable. Both have got a little bit of pneumonia. So um, when we triaged them yesterday, we triaged them. Uh, Wendy, the vet, had a look. Okay, baby. Um, some of them have got nail polish on. Not all of them, so I'm going to try and record that. But we put a little toe band on. So you've got purple toe band number eight. Purple means it had pneumonia. Um, so you've got number eight here. Very good feeder. I fed um, every four hours just to get on top, but they've got some pretty bad poo at the moment. So once we get on top of that and stabilize them, but it's bright and alert. He's been nebulized this morning and he's had his um, antibiotics this morning. An absolutely gorgeous little baby. So that's number one. So cute. Here we go. The back cave. Feeding time. Here we go. Little bat Jim. With a couple of groomers. Look at this. Oh, hello. So who are you? Mr. I've got a splint. Oh. oh, not really hiding behind it's your wing. Tully, look at you. And who's your little mate behind you? Oh. That's the screamer. The screamer, <laughs> Therese. Hello. Oh, not sure about that. Oh, we're going to run away. Oh. <laughs> Classic. These are little buckets of uh, mixed chopped fruit and, and um, I'm being given a brand new hairdo, yes. um, <laughs> courtesy of Boeing, yeah. I believe. Oh, no, 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 it's like a big one. No, it's, it's like not a Boeing. Okay. Big, non-Boeing. Yeah. Um, um, right, we're going to move that over here. Yeah. So, this is for the younger ones. They have a little hidey hole over here where they can get away oh, from no. the big ones and they have yeah. their own fruit in here. Just to make sure that they all, okay. you know, they all yeah. get a fair share. Because yeah. sometimes you do get bullies or you get shyer ones, you yeah. know. So that's they know that that's a little safe haven they can come to. Yeah. Oh, there's a bit of fisty cuffing going on here. That's they can be. Yes, they can be. Yeah. 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 We're yeah. just going to go around the. It's Avery. the black versus the grey. And in the left corner there is. Now I've lost yeah. Boeing. He should be obvious, but I've I've lost him. Mm -hmm. 
And they're not the most delicate of feeders, are they? No. There you go. Well, if I'm not mistaken, you are Boeing. And you're going back for another crack at the fruit. Yep, definitely Boeing. Yes, we know who you are, Boeing. Mm -hmm. We sure don't have any mistake about that. Boeing has to learn how to be a bat, so being with other bats has been a, a good leg up for Boeing because he's only ever known his, uh, his foster mum who uh, brought him down from Harvey Bay just the other day, wasn't it, Jeannie? Yes, two days ago. Two days ago. So he's only had two days with other bats to realise that he's actually a bat and not a human being. But you're just giving him Boeing candy, is that right? Yes. Well, we could have spent the evening of Australia Day many ways, but I think this is one of the best memories we are going to have for Australia Day in quite a while. Hello, you. Hello. Just showing you here, he's a grey-headed flying fox. These guys are endangered now. Their numbers are massively um, depleted in the last few years and they're actually endemic to parts of Australia, found nowhere else in the world. So it's a huge loss with their numbers being declining so rapidly. So they're very special, the grey-headed and um, messy eaters as they all are oh. and um, I'm glad I'm not standing underneath that oh that was an inversion oh and we shake it off just like humans oh just miss catching that on camera that's what bats do and that's what humans do and we've got a bit of reaching out here this is when they um, use their thumbs to actually try and grab the food often blossom but food trays uh, an adaptation when you've got a bat in captivity and being rehabilitated and we've got a little bit of water activity going on there how to use a dripper bottle they soon learn skills that you hope they will eventually unlearn when they go out into the wild Look at these guys, they love it. Yep. My God, they can't wait to get into it. Yeah, they really do love it, don't they? Oh, yeah, babies, look at you fighting over it. There's another one in there. Oh, my darlings. <sighs> so good. 
Oh, I like it. I think it's love at first sight between these two. I don't know what's going on. I'll groom you and you groom me. bit of back grooming. They're very clean animals, all said and done. They're not the dirty, nasty animals that people say they are. They groom themselves constantly like a cat. These guys are all just checking us out in the other aviary. These hopefully will be released in two or three weeks time and a mixture of greys and blacks look at the beautiful colours on the greys absolutely stunning hanging in a colony doing what bats do very sociable except when it's feeding time and then there's a lot of poking and sticking each other with the thumbs getting the best blossom